So here we're going to use given information to write the growth rate equation with t. So we're using y equals a times 1 plus r raised to the t. Then we have to find the amount in the account after the given years. So in this example, 3a, Alicia opened a college savings account with $6,000 in 2010. So we're using this equation, a equals $6,000. And then the average interest rate is 4%. So that's 4%. Remember to convert that, you divide by 100 or move the decimal places left two times. So our rate is actually 0 0.04. Then we need to look at time. So the time is from 2010 to 2015, so that is five years. Now, it doesn't have compounding in here. So if there's no compound, then the, we're not using the other formula. So we're not using the A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. Now, the reason why we're not using that, because it says per year, per year, n is actually 1. So if you plug this into the equation, just to, just to show you, if we plugged in 1, 1 times t, notice that it is the same exact equation. So you only use this formula when it says it's compounded more than once a year. So it's compounded quarterly, compounded um, by, you know, by annually and so forth. So if it doesn't have the word compounded, do not use this formula. Now there will be a bonus question um, on Mrs. Wilkie's quiz um, that has to do with compounded. So if you remember how to use this formula, that's good for that problem. But for these ones, you do not need it. So let's first write our equation. So we're just using the growth formula because it's per year. So y equals 6,000 times 1 plus 0.04 raised to the t. So right now I just want the general equation. So 6,000, 1 plus 0.04 is 1.04 raised to the t. So that is the general equation that we are looking for. Next, we want to know what's the amount after? Five years. So now we plug in the 5, 6,000 times 1.04 raised to the fifth power. Now to give you calculator directions, you type 6,000 parentheses 1.04 and then the exponent um, to the fifth power. There's no, um, there's no rational exponent or anything like that, so you just type it exactly like you see it. So when you type it in, you will get that it's approximately $7,299.92. So it's money, so you just round to the hundredths place. Okay, and so you do the same thing for 3B and 3C. Again, being careful with the percent, so how many, how many times are you moving it? And then calculating how many years is that from 15 to 2019. So identify A, identify the rate, and then identify the time. And again, the time you use only when you're plugging it in here. I want to see this equation first. So now this section, you're going to rewrite each in exponential form first. So that's the very first step, and that is going to be worth a point. So two points for each of these. Um, you write it in exponential form first, and then the second part is evaluating without a calculator. So remember when you're trying to evaluate logarithms, think about 7 to what power equals that number, 49. And so you have to rewrite in exponential form first, so that hopefully helps you out in re rewriting it. So here you would see that x would equal 2, and that's the answer. So let me try 4i. So in this example, we have log base 81 to the 1 third. So this is 81 to what power equals 1 third? So number one, if you see that you have an 81 and then it becomes a fraction or it goes the other direction, for example, like here, 1 half to 8, you know for sure that your exponent has to be negative. Then the other piece of this is knowing that you have 81 and it goes down to 3, that is smaller, so you have to use a fraction as well as the exponent. Okay, so it's negative when you see that it becomes a fraction or not a fraction, and it was, and then, and that's the negative exponent, and then if it gets smaller, then you're using some type of rational exponent or fraction exponent. So 81x, we know we're going to use a negative, and then 81 to 3, so something to the 81, nth power of 81 is 3. And so what is that? Um, that is 4. So therefore, this answer is one, negative 1 over 4. 6.3, we'll want to simplify. So remember what we want these to look like. So if we have the same base, log base b of some value, that cancels out. Or 
if you have log of base b of b and something up here we know that this cancels out as well and it's just the exponent um, so that's what we're looking at here oh in the third case natural log of e so if you ever see natural log of e that base is e so this cancels it out so that might help you out with this one and you can kind of see what you're left over with um, so 5a if you do that one that cancels out the answer is x for this example here, it's close, right? We need that to be the same base. So 36, how can we make that a base of 6? Six? 6 to what power? So you're going to rewrite that as 6 squared. So replace the 36 with that 6 squared because they're exactly the same. And so you would have log base 6 of 6 squared. That's what 36 is. And then you still have that 5x. So don't forget the 5x. So that multiplies to that other exponent. So the log base 6 of 6 cancels. Now we're left with 2 times 5x. So the final answer is 10x. So 5, D, E, and F, you want to find the inverse of each. So for 5D, remember there's nothing there that's base 10. So y equals log base 10 of x plus 7, and then you switch the roles. So one way to do this is to rewrite it as an exponential. So I'll do that first. So you think of identify the base. So exponential is b to the x of uh, equals y. So the base is 10. Logs always equal the exponent. So the exponent is the x over here. And then you write whatever is left over, which is the y plus 7. And then you subtract. So then you find that y equals 10 to the x minus 7, and then finish it up, g to the x equals 10 to the x minus 7. The other way to do it is from here, you can think about what can I do to cancel out this log base 10? Now, you can exponentiate with the base of 10, and then when you do that, notice that it just cancels this out, and then we get to the same spot here. So that's another way to think about it, if that makes sense to you. If not, you can think about rewriting. For 5e, let's find the inverse. So this one, it's in exponential form. And then so we switch the roles. And so right now it's an exponential. We want to get it in log form. So log, the base is 4. And then we put the x here. And it equals, logs always equal the exponent. So y plus 9. And then you solve for y, so let's subtract 9 from both sides. Then we find that log base 4 of x minus 9 equals y, or g of x equals log base 4 of x minus 9. No parentheses, right? No parentheses there. Now, another way to do this is to think about what can I do to cancel out this 4? I want this 4 to go away. One way to think about it is if I take the log of base 4 to each side, notice that the log base 4 of 4 cancels, and then we are left with this same thing here, right? This cancels, and so it drops down the y plus 9, and we get the same exact thing. So whatever makes the most sense to you, um, you can do that with finding the inverse. We will be using that when we're solving equations. So I hope this helps you out um, on some of these problems. Thanks for watching.